I'm Ariel Garten, the founder of Interaxon. At Interaxon, we create brain sensing technologies. Can we have our awesome? So we all know there's a sensor revolution afoot. We have sensors that track your sleep, trans sensors that track your steps, you have heart rate monitors you wear at the gym so that you can be in the optimal fitness zone and burn calories faster. But there's something that's missing. What if we had a sensor that could track and sense what was going on in your mind? Think about the world of possibilities that that opens up. Now in the past, if you wanted to get to know your brain, you would go into a clinic or a hospital and sit there with masses of wires coming out of your head, goopy gel, have a clinician take about half an hour to fit a clinical grade EEG, and then you'd sit there kind of bored and patient while somebody tried to decode the massive information coming out of your head. Well, I have my brain sensor in my back pocket. This is Muse, the brain sensing headband. Your sensors, oh, your sensors on the forehead and behind the ears, and it slips on just like a pair of glasses. It can actually track my brain activity, and then it sends it wirelessly to this little handy dandy tool that we all have in our own pockets. So, you're not gonna be able to see this from here, but this is my brain, and this is my brain on iPhone. What's actually going on is this is reading my EEG, I'm reading my brain waves. Brain waves are the sum total of neuronal activation that happens in your head. When you think or you do anything, your brain waves change because your neurons are communicating electrochemically, zips and zaps of electrical energy moving around your head that then sum on the total of your, on the surface of your skull that we can then read with devices just like this. We can then take that information that comes off your head and create experiences around it, things that you can actually do with your brain. Let me show you some of the things that we've built at Interaxon. So I started working with brain tech sensing technology about a decade ago in the lab of Dr. Steve Mann. There we started by creating concerts where 40 people at a time were actually able to control music with their mind. They each put on a little EEG headband, way, way precursor of the muse, and they were able, by modulating their level of alpha waves, by relaxing or not relaxing, to control musicians' output. We then played with this music model for quite some time, doing multiple concerts where people were creating music, musicians were creating music, people were trading music back and forth, all using their mind. Then we thought, we want to actually show the power of this. We want to show up by something real and physical. So we created the levitating chair. You would sit inside the levitating chair, and by relaxing, you'd increase your alpha brain waves, and that would cause the chair to rise. Thanks, of course, to a handy-dandy winch that we had hidden in the ceiling. Then, when 3D technology was all the rage and everybody was 3D TV that, 3D movie this, we said, well, we know how to make experiences really immersive. We can actually put people inside of the experiences. So we created a 3D TV that would actually respond to your brain state. The activity, the uh, scene inside of the 3D scene would move and change based on where your brain was at. The scene could snow, the water could move, all change based on different changes in your brain state. Then we thought, we want to do something really big. What so happened, the Olympics was coming to Canada the next year, and so I put in a one-page proposal to somebody at the government hoping somebody would call me back, and they did. And we created an installation that allowed people to control some really, really, really big things with their minds. The CN Tower, the lighting on the Canadian Parliament buildings, and the lighting on the Niagara Falls. So over 17 days of the Olympics, 7,000 people were able to control in real time the lighting on these massive icons from 3,000 kilometers, which is still 2,000 miles, across the country. One at a time, people would sit in a chair in front of a big screen that was a live view to the CN Tower, Parliament Buildings, and Niagara Falls, slip on a headset, and by modulating their levels of focus and relaxation, they'd make the lights move and dance on either the CN Tower, or the Parliament Buildings, and Niagara Falls. And so you'd have people, I know me, I did this, uh, I was the very last person to do it. And I sat down and I actually called my mom, who was in Toronto, and said, go to the end of the driveway where you can see the CN Tower and just watch. So I slipped on the headset, I sat down, I focused on the lighting on the CN Tower and I made it like swirl and spin and then I focused harder and I made the lights come up and down and my mother was just standing there saying, are you doing this for me? That was a proud mom. 
so then we got really excited about all the things that you could control with your mind. And we made thought-controlled slot car machines and thought-controlled toasters. And if you come to our Christmas party, you're going <laughs> to... At a Christmas party, you can try our thought-controlled beer tap. I'm not kidding. It's really fun. It's also self-limiting. The more drunk you get, the harder it is to use. <laughs> and then we thought, okay, this control stuff is really nifty, but you know, we're still very basic in what we can do with the control with this technology. Its control is based on focus and relaxation, which is phenomenal, but still basic. We then realized that if we had already created a system where we had a computer and a human in the loop, the computer could actually know something about us and use that information in interesting ways. So I created the responsive room. In the responsive room, the elements of the room all changed based on your brain state. Technology was now responding to you rather than you attempting to control it. It knew something about you and could adjust to support your interaction. So as you read, the lights would get brighter. As you relaxed, the blinds would close and the music would dim. As you fell asleep, the music would turn off. Now this was totally astounding. Still, still very early, still just a demo. But then we realized, if we have a system where we have a human and a computer in the loop, and the computer knows something about us, something even niftier can happen. If we can play the video, please. Which means we could know something about us. So this is a very, very simple game that we built. We could have the video on 31 seconds. Possible. Normally, you rotate the object using the touch screen. In this version, you do it with your mind. So this is a demo that we made of a game called As you Bend. focus on the wooden form, it rotates. The more you focus, the faster the rotation. Tilt the iPad to change the angle of the rope while you maintain your focus. When you're done, you receive feedback about how you did. Not just how much rope you used, but how your brain was doing. How you could improve your inner game for next time. This kind of information is much more than game feedback. It's building skills you can use in the real world. This is building a better brain and a better you. Great. We can go back to the slides, please. So that's pretty nifty. Once you can actually track what goes on inside your mind, mind you can actually see what your brain is doing and then use that information to improve yourself in some way. You can actually begin to track what goes on in your mind and then learn to control your internal mental processes. So the first thing that we went to build to share with people, to share with all of you, is the Muse Brain Health System. It gives you exercises to improve your cognitive function and decrease your stress. So it's actually able to track your brain, show you where your brain is at, and then give you very, very simple exercises that you can use to improve your productivity and manage your stress and relaxation. Another great thing that the technology can do easily is help you meditate. Now, a lot of people try to meditate and they sit there and their eyes are closed and they're trying to clear their minds and they're like, this is not working, I have no clue what's going on. Like, is this thing on? We always hear people say, if I could only have something that could tell me if it worked, I could kind of feel like I could do it. Well, this technology is really nifty because it can readily track whether your mind is quiet and when your mind is distracted. So if you sit down and focus on your breath, we can know literally when you were in the zone, when you were meditating, and when your mind has started to wander. And then tell you, hey, you're wandering. Bring your mind back. Meditation is a pretty interesting thing. It's becoming a real hot button in neuroscience these days. It used to be this ancient technology, and then it was this flaky technology, and then people like the military and congressmen started to get interested in it, and then middle Americans started to say, hey, I go to yoga class, and at the end of yoga class, we do this meditation thing, and I feel really chilled out afterwards, and I'm better able to handle my life. So a number of scientists have gone on board and began to study it intensely. This is a study from Sarah Lazar at Harvard, looking at what happens in the brains of long-term meditators. Well, they noticed that when you meditate long-term, your prefrontal cortex remains thick throughout your lifetime. Now, for most of us, unfortunately, as we age, our prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain that manages our organization, our planning, it actually shrinks over time. I'm sorry. But people who meditate are actually able to maintain the thickness of their prefrontal cortex. A 50-year-old meditator was demonstrated to have a prefrontal cortex as 
thick as somebody who was 25. They also noticed some interesting changes in a part of your brain called the insula. The insula regulates your emotions. And they noticed that people, as they age who meditated, had more robust insulas, i.e., better and more robust emotional regulation. Now, this is really interesting. So we think about the brain, and we think about how it governs our bodies and how we interact in the world. And we typically think of the cognitive function of our brain. We want our brains to be sharp so that we can think better, we can do better at math, we can not lose our way more so, uh, so easily. But there's also a really important emotional aspect to our brains and how it governs our body and our lives. When you look at workplace efficacy studies, for example, people who are able to regulate their emotions even do better in the workplace than those who are really sharp cognitively. So it interacts on when we sort of sat down and said, OK, what could we possibly do that's going to be really beneficial to people? What could we possibly build that's going to help them? We said, well, what if we just made a tool that helps you calm and quiet your mind so that you can improve your cognitive function and your emotional regulation? And so we went out and tested it. And the first people we tested it on were athletes. And it seemed that it was working really well. And so then we went and we tested it with some average people, like you and me. I'm not an athlete. And it also seemed like it was doing really well. And I'd have people in my office using it. And they'd say things like, oh, life just sort of seems like it's easier now. And so then we were approached by the Canadian Olymp um, Olympic Committee. And we started working with Canadian Olympians to help them prepare for the upcoming Pan Am Games and the next Olympics. And we said, OK, this is really cool. Let's make this a product. Let's make this something that we can actually share with people. And then we started to think about where we wanted to go next with it. And we realized there's this unbelievable opportunity with kids. We know that kids suffer from this terrible thing called ADD. Suffer, actually I put quotation marks around, because you never know if it's something that is actually quite phenomenal or something that's quite terrible or something that's both at the same time. I'm being really dramatic here. Um, but kids with ADD have heightened levels of theta waves or dream state and lowered levels of beta waves or focus state. And clinical research over the last 20 years has shown that if you give kids reinforcement to upregulate their, their beta waves and downregulate their theta waves, they can improve their ADD symptoms as effectively as Ritalin. So we've actually started making video games that kids can play that just by doing so improve their ADD symptoms as effectively as Ritalin. Kind of astounding. And with systems like ours, you get the opportunity to give everybody an insight into their own mind, into your own mental process. So we heard some amazing stuff about the world out there, the world of the Mars rover, you know, the world of space. We have an amazing opportunity in here to do some self-discovery, to dive inside and see what we learn, see what we love, see what we engage with inside of our own minds. And then in the far future, actually be able to control the Mars rovers on there using them. Thank you. Can we do QA? Sure. All Don't right. Any questions? We're going to open it up to QA. Any questions? Yes, sir. I have. Awesome. Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned uh, ADHD. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned kids specifically. Have you tested it with adults who struggle with ADD? Um, so we haven't tested that with adults that struggle with ADD. Um, we have had adults that struggle with ADD who have come into our office to do user testing on our other system. Um, we haven't done a clinical study on it yet, so I can't comment on validation. But certainly, if you can help yourself regulate your attention, you're going to be in a much better place. Yes? So anxiety, this helps dramatically with anxiety. Um, we haven't looked into depression, schizophrenia. We have partner labs who have purchased our headset to do depression studies. Um, there's actually lots of work that demonstrates that depression um, can be seen in a hemispheric asymmetry between your brainwave states. So you have more alpha on one side of your brain than the other side. Um, and by correcting that asymmetry, you're actually able to improve depression. Yes, sir. So 
sure, you can all order it on getyourmuse.com. Um, <laughs> we're in pre-orders now. The headsets are at manufacture. We'll be shipping uh, at the beginning of 2014, and it's $259. Yes? So we're a while from reading discrete thoughts. Right now, we're um, on the level of reading brain states and changes in state. Um, with a larger sensor count system, you can actually store one or two very specific ideas that relate only to you. Um, and that's the extent currently. I'd say reading thoughts, per se, is eight years down the road. Yes? Totally. Um, so, brain state obviously defines a lot about your body physiology, particularly um, like our Muse Brain Health System. You're doing cognitive exercises, but it improves your blood pressure, for example. Yep. You. So brain waves are noisy and very complicated things. The question is, are they construct or deconstruct? Um, or, so brain waves kind of move in dipoles from one side of your head to the other side of your head. And what we're reading is the aggregate at this moment. Um, and it is obviously you know, constructive by the time it gets here, but they move in and out of phase. Yep. Time, probably uh, time for one more question. OK, sir. Mm -hmm. So the device I showed was probably 32 electrodes. Complicated medical can be even, or the device on the screen was 32. Complicated can be 128 or more. We are clinical grade EEG. So it's the exact same clinical grade EEG. When dry sensors, so there's no gel, and we have four sensors two on the forehead and two behind the ears, four channels, as well as the reference in the ground, so six sensors total, um, versus the 30, 32 sensors. So it's a shrinking reduction. It becomes wireless. You connect it to your smartphone. It's easily usable, and there's no gel. There's probably like a 10 or 15% reduction in signal with our dry sensor technology, as opposed to goops of gel on your forehead. But it's not something that anybody would notice 